In this lesson, we will learn about what is disruptive selection and why it is important. Remember Darwin's theory of natural selection? Well, recall that Darwin's theory uh, states that organisms with the traits best suited for their environment were most likely to reproduce and therefore pass on their traits to the next generation. Darwin did not come up with the theory of disruptive selection, but rather his theories led to the development of three different types of natural, of, of natural selection. One disruptive, another directional, which we talk about in another video, and another called stabilizing. And these are pretty easy to remember. Um, let's focus on disruptive selection. When someone disrupts you in the middle of a conversation, they interrupt the flow of the conversation. Imagine the same thing happens with the survival of the fittest in a population of black-bellied, seed-cracking finches, like those located up here. As opposed to eliminating the extremes of a population, such as uh, what you would notice in stabilizing selection, um, as you can see, um, here's the mean of a population. This mean or average trait in the population is disrupted. Okay? Meaning there's eventually, due to some circumstance, which we'll describe in a minute, um, we're going to actually lean towards traits that are at the extremes, such as a really dark co coat color and a really light coat color. And there's really not going to be a whole lot of variation in the middle. Okay? So, what does this mean in, um, in nature? Let's give an example. Um, Black-bellied finches of Western Africa had different beaks, okay? Um, so, the wider, uh, the, the ones with the wider lower beaks on the left and the smaller low beaks on the right, um, any, or anywhere in between, um, these, these beaks, if there were their traits in between, would have to compete for food. But because there's such major differences in the size of their beaks, they would be obviously maybe uh, more suited or more fit to survive and open up the, the seeds on, on foods on different parts of the island or on different trees, etc. Um, and so they were much more likely to survive if they're aiming to eat distinctly different sized food. Another example is down here in the, in the color of um, snakeskin. So snakes um, can be divided into two distinctly different populations over time because of perhaps where they lived. These uh, snakes down here, these water snakes, um, evolved an extreme color, perhaps you know, sort of an extreme gray color, and these snakes over here are brown color, and there's very few in between because the snakes either live near water or they live in sort of the grassy areas around, around um, maybe a water source. And this is shown in the areas of Lake Erie and the lake um, in the surrounding areas that these snakes evolved very different extremes of traits. Um, and this is ultimately so that they're either going to find food more easily or escape from predators more easily, um, maybe even find their food more, e more easily, find their prey more easily. Um, and so if we were to have a population in the, in the intermediary range, like right in here, in between the two, um, they perhaps might not be as successful. So over time, we are driven uh, to either become extinct or to be more successful. And just remember that disruptive selection is when the average or the mean uh, sort of trait is disruptive and the extremes of this, of this trait survive. Compare this to the other two types of uh, selection that we note in other videos, direction and stabilizing selection.